Welcome to the presentation on best possible yield and highest grain quality from growing of modern spring oat varieties. I will give to you a brief overview on specialties of the oat crop as well as newest uh, variety information regarding all oat varieties, spring oat varieties sold via Sartan Union and Rapool in the Baltics. First, I would like to introduce you our company Nordsaat. We do oat farming, selection and breeding since 1910, so since nearly 100 years or even more than 100 years. We have Europe's most extensive and successful spring oat breeding, which means that our Nordsaat oat varieties cover one-fourth one fourth of the total oat area in the Baltics as well as in the whole uh, area of Europe covered with spring oat varieties. We have separate oat variety selection strategies for Central, for Northern, for Western, for Eastern and also for Southern Europe. And very important is the cooperation that we do with uh, different plant breeding institutes and research institutes uh, in Germany as well. It's the Federal uh, Research Institute for Crop for federal crops, uh, for cultivated crops, called uh, Julius Kühn Institute, our gene bank in Gartersleben, the IPK, the German Federation for Plant Innovation, our biotech lab, Satin Union Biotech, and as also the German Seed Alliance, which is very important for us in terms of uh, data handling. And last but not least, we are in a very close contact to all other partners in the European oat value chain. That means millers, traders, advisors, farmers, etc. Coming back to oats. In Germany, we see that the yield of oats between 1985 and 2020 uh, has been developed very different in official trials and in practical farming. In this slide, you see that we have a steady increase of the varieties that are present in official yield trials of the Bundesordnungsamt of our Federal Plant Variety Office. But this development is not obvious in practical farm yield. Of course, you may ask why this could happen. There are on, only a very few declarations and the time will be too short to declare everything. But please keep in mind that oat, oats are a crop which is more or less now grown on a, not on the best soils, on, on, on light soils, not in the best uh, position in, in crop rotation. Uh, we have of course, a loss of knowledge, a loss of engagement for the crop, and we have a very slow um, exchange of varieties, a very slow introduction of newer and higher yielding varieties. And last but not least, we have also a statistical issue in it here, because um, meanwhile, uh, between 25 and 30 percent of the oats grown in Germany are grown under organic conditions, which is marked by uh, above 25% lower yield at all. And of course, uh, this is a disadvantage, which is uh, not visual in, in official trials uh, under conventional conditions. So there are many reasons for it. And of course, many chances to overcome this very large gap, which, which is the largest gap uh, between official trial yield and farm yield of all cereals in Germany. This has to be noticed. We have also a very positive development of the grain quality in oat breeding in Germany. You can see that in the left above corner, the hull content of oats has been uh, steadily decreased from uh, above 30% to around about 26-27% in official trials currently. The screenings uh, above 2.0 millimeter have seen a very, very positive development uh, from 94 up to 99 or even 100 percent. Uh, same is valid also for the hellability, which, which is also steady increasing since uh, more than 20 years uh, from 92 percent up to nearly also 100 percent. So also a very positive development. And last but not least, in the right uh, corner below, you see the hectoliter weight, which, which is very often discussed to be a, um, yeah, a critical uh, oat trait for trading. And many farmers in Germany have uh, uh, seen that uh, this hectoliter weight can be a disadvantage in oats. Nevertheless, you see from a breeding point of view, we have also a positive development in the hectoliter weight of new oat varieties. 
not as steady increasing as the other uh, important old quality traits, but there's also an increase that can be seen. You can also see that this development is marked by ups and downs in many years. You see positive and negative impacts of years, especially the, in the last 10 years, the years 2010 and also the year 2019 were marked by negative impacts. But with, with different uh, uh, outcomes for, for the different trades. You see that the year 2019 had a very high hull content uh, compared to the to other, other years, but the hullability was on a better mark. And in contrast, 2010 was a year with a very, very bad hullability, but the hull content was slightly lower than compared to 2019. In terms of screenings and, and hectoliter weight, both years have been negative compared to other things. So it can be considered that maybe every four, five, six years, it has to be taken into consideration that old quality maybe will go down also in practical farming. The growing conditions for oats in Germany differ very much. We have uh, on the left side of the picture, uh, the long-term precipitation, uh, which is varying in the very dry areas uh, from below 450 millimeters per year till two, more than 2000 millimeters in mountain areas or pre-mountain areas. And you can clearly see that the yield, the yield level here given for the uh, year 2020, very much depends from the precipitation, from the heights of the precipitation. We have a clearly lower yield uh, in dry areas. We have a clearly higher yield in mo more moist areas. And for sure, this is a very important point to be noticed for oats. You see, the highest yields in oats in Germany have been gained in, in the far north, which is a, a very historical high yielding area for oats in Germany. Uh, we have seen 100 years ago uh, that farmers used the so-called Probsteier half or, or oats from the Probsteier, an historical region in the far north, south of the city of Kiel, which was known as a as a region uh, with a uh, with a varieties or with varieties that can deliver high yield. And those oats, Probsteier half, was used by the first breeders to do crosses, to have higher yield in modern varieties. Uh, and to come to a higher yield potential in oats in general. This was a very successful development. On the right side, you see in, in Germany, we have, despite uh, this differing, different uh, and, diff uh, and varying yield potential, we have oat growing nearly in every region in Germany. So in the northeast uh, is around one third, in the northwest is, is around 30%, and the rest is in the south of Germany. Uh, with concentrations around the big cities, uh, where we have a lot of horses, but also with some spots for oat growing in the south, at the uh, Schwäbische Alb area, mountain area, but also in the Bayerische Fichtelgebirge, also in a uh, closed area, a mountain area. Uh, nevertheless, you see there's a widespread of oat, of oat growing in Germany. And if we will have a look to the next table, you have to consider that if I talk about Northwest, it will be the region consisting of the federal states of uh, Schleswig-Holstein, Lower Saxony and Northern Westphalia. East will be the, the dry areas in the east, uh, the federal countries of Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania, Brandenburg, Lower Sex, uh, Saxony, Anhalt, Saxony and Thuringia. And in the south it will be Bavaria, Baden-Württemberg and Rheinland-Pfalz and the south of the federal state of Hessen. If you have a look to a more detailed uh, data from yield and, and uh, quality in oats in Germany, you see the best region for growing oats is the Northwest region. You have 82.6 DC tons per hectare uh, in yield. Here again with the variety Symphony, a very well-known variety also in the Baltics, which is a standard oat variety in Estonia, but also in Lithuania, and is used also as a standard oat in Germany. It's widely spread in many countries around the Baltic Sea and belongs to the most widely grown oat varieties all over Europe the last years. So the highest yield potential for sure can be get in Northwest, where you have cooler and more wet conditions and also rather good soils. The Northeast and the Southwest are marked by lower yields. This is a, li a little bit contradictory because the Southwest regularly has a little bit higher yields than the Northeast. But uh, Symphony is a variety that is better adapted to Northeast growing conditions. 
Concerning the hectoliter weight, you see southern conditions give the highest hectoliter weights. And in the northwest, where you see the highest yields, you have very often the lowest hectoliter weights. This is also valid for the hull content, a very important quality trait. Hull content is also highest in the northwest region, where you have highest yields. Obviously, the old crop is not giving everything, uh, every power and everything to higher quality and higher kernel content but than uh, gaining higher yields. And in the northeast and in the southwest, where you have lower yields, it is possible also to have lower hull contents. Screenings are very positive very often in the northwest and also in the southwest region. Under dry continental conditions, screenings can suffer and can be lower. And this is also a valid statement for the hullability. Hullability is also a term which is regularly very positive in the northwest, can be also very positive in the southwest, and can be under pressure in the northeast regions. And if you have a look, more detailed look to the phenological data of the old crop here for the variety symphony, you see that the longest period for from between sowing and panicle emergence is, is in the north, northwest region. Also the longest grain filling period is in the northwest region and the longest vegetation period at all with 140 days, days is also in the northwest region. And especially in the northeast and in the southwest you have a shorter period for grain filling which is a rather uh, large disadvantage for, for old growing. But nevertheless qualities can be still good if the right location will be choosed. In the next slide I will show you some of our varieties that are grown in the Baltics that are sold by our colleagues from the Rapool uh, organization. Our most important variety is the variety Harmony, a white hulled oat variety with really uh, balanced pre premium grain quality, really acknowledged by many oat milling companies all over Europe. It's highly accepted by German and Finnish oat millers, belongs to the largest and widely grown milling oat varieties in both countries. It has a high and stable grain yield, a good standing power and a low risk for don mycotoxin contamination, which is important to notice. Then the variety Symphony, which already I mentioned, a white hold oat variety with a very high eco stability. It means Symphony is widely grown around the Baltic Sea. It's a standard oat variety in Germany, in Denmark, in Sweden, in Lithuania and in Estonia. It has a good grain quality. It has a low risk for don mycotoxin contamination and it's also suitable for organic farming due to the fact that Symphony is also larger growing, it has a higher plant heads. Our newest series, which I still want to mention, is the variety Lion, a yellow hulled oat variety with an exceptional premium grain quality. It's excitingly demanded by the whole European oat milling industry. It has a high and stable grain yield, a good standing power and a medium to low risk for don mycotoxin contamination. I will give some more information about the variety Lion in the next slides. Here you can see the yield of Lion in official trials between the years 2016 and 2019. And you see that the yield potential in many, many countries and also in many years is above the yield of the standard varieties. So that means that Lion has a very stable and high yield potential in many, many European uh, regions and many European countries, including the Baltic countries, where the variety was tested in the years 2017 and 2018, which were really different. 2017 was a really moist year with high yields. 2018 was really, really dry. And you see the very stable performance of this oat in this very, very different years. If you have a look to the profile of line in the official trials in Europe between 2016 and 2018, you see especially that the yield potential uh, of in the, here given as a grain yield to, compared to standard varieties was above 100 in all countries and all years. The high content is really, really low, which is really, really high uh, of high importance for, for old milling in Europe. So it's a between 10 or even 15% lower than other varieties and standard oat varieties that are currently used in official trial procedures in Europe. Not surprisingly, the growth yield is very, very high between 105 and 110%. Also, the hectoliter weight is above the standard uh, of many, many countries. So it's, it has a very high and stable hectoliter weight. The southern grain weight is slightly lower. Lion is not a variety with a very large grain. Hullability means the term 
how easy the hull can be removed from the kernel. Also a very important trait for oat milling. And you see that the hullability is also above 100 in a, in a very high manner. Screenings are, I would say, on an average level or slightly lower than large grain varieties like, for example, Symphony or Harmony. Nevertheless, in many growing regions or many growing situations, it's very, very sufficient. It has a very sufficient uh, performance. Also important to know, here you can see a diagram with mycotoxin contamination gained by Nordsat via artificial infection between the years 2016 and 2020. You see the variety lion and many standard varieties, also well-known varieties, susceptible and also resistant varieties. Here in comparison with German standard varieties, Max Symphony and Harmony, the uh, Scandinavian standard variety Belinda, the susceptible standard Bessin, and the resistant uh, standard Keeley. And it's very easy to see that a lion is a variety that is below susceptible standards, also below the susceptible standard Max, uh, slightly at the level of Belinda, which is an acceptable level for Don Mycotoxin -contamination, contamination in Scandinavia. So it's not as low as Symphony and Harmony, those varieties are better, but it's not as, as high as, for example, susceptible varieties. So it's an, on a medium level, which is, I would say, quite sufficient. Other varieties that can be grown in the Baltics in 2021 are Apollon, our yellow-hulled oat variety, our largest variety grown in Germany. It has an excellent and very accepted grain quality uh, for milling, very much accepted by German oat millers and also abroad. The yield level of Apollon is very high and stable. It has a very large grain with a superb hullability. It's very excellent in hullability and a good standing power. Apollon is also serving as a standard oat variety in organic trials in Germany. Another variety is our variety Mati. Mati is a white hulled oat variety with a premium grain quality, the mostly grown medium to late ripening oat variety in Finland. It's really a branded variety in Finland in farming and also in processing due to the fact that it's high yielding, medium to early ripening and has an excellent quality and additionally it has a low risk for Don mycotoxin contamination which can be a regular problem in Finnish oat farming. I will show you later on why Mati is so branded in Finland. Another variety is our variety Caddy. Caddy is a universal variety, a white hulled oat variety with an exceptional high and stable yield potential in all countries around the Baltic Sea. It has a good standing power and a balanced grain quality for universal use. So the, the most important point with this variety is its very high and stable yield potential. And last but not least, the variety Delphin, a yellow-hulled oat variety with highest yield potential of all oat varieties in Northern and Western Europe. Especially under very good conditions or on, on heavy soils, Delphin shows highest yield potential. It should not be grown on light soils or on dry areas, then it suffers. Delphin has a large grain with a high hectoliter weight, a good standing power and also a low risk for non mycotoxin contamination. The last slide shows you the oat grain quality gained by farmers, so by the official harvest reports from the Finnish Food Authority. Here I have marked the mostly grown oat varieties in 2020 and it's the average of the official harvest reports 2016 to 2020. So that means this is not trial data, this is farmers data. Then the farmers have noticed that the variety Mati between 2016 and 2020 had the highest hectoliter weight and the best screenings, this is measured in Finland, of all varieties of the mostly grown oat varieties in Finland, especially if you have a look to the mostly grown varieties Niklas and Mary, which are the number one and number two varieties in oat growing in Finland. And Mati is the number three in 2020. And also Harmony is a variety with a high hectoliter weight, not the highest, but higher than many other varieties in Finland and excellent screenings. So this is the main point why Mati has such a high level of acceptance in the Finnish outgrowing and it's, it was growing the last years year by year in farming. So farmers really acknowledged the high yield and the good quality measures of the variety Mati. That's what I wanted to mention to you. Thank you for your attention. If you have more questions, you are open to contact my colleagues from the Rapool Baltic team and also from Sartin Union's foreign department team. Thank you very much. Have a good day, good vegetation and good success when growing our old varieties.